<laughs> so <laughs> now that it's uh, 2 p.m. here in uh, Central Europe, um, yes. let's, let's start the webinar. Let's do All right. right. Let's Great. Do it. Fantastic. Um, so welcome everyone uh, to this webinar where our theme is the unbreakable. So we're diving deeper into the digital supply chain in coffee. So basically, um, how, how does the coffee supply chain work right now during a, a time of crisis? Uh, in this webinar, we're bringing together different uh, stakeholders from the coffee supply chain uh, to talk about the current challenges and also the digital opportunities um, of coffee sourcing in a time like this. So I'm Susanna from Algrano. Uh, most of you probably already know Algrano. So Algrano is a marketplace that connects coffee growers with coffee roasters. I'm super stoked to introduce our panelists of the day. So actually all four of us are in different countries, which is pretty cool. And uh, thanks to technology, uh, we can make this happen. So uh, first of all, from Brazil, uh, we have Alan from Sun Coffee. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself, Alan? Yeah, of course. First of all, um, thank you so, so much for the invitation. Really nice to be able to talk about coffee with you guys. Morning for me here, afternoon for you. Um, so I would just be very brief because I want to leave more time for, um, for the conversation. But uh, Sam Coffee is a co-op that consists of 20 member farms. We are located in uh, Minas Gerais state in Brazil, in this area that's developing a new um, denomination of origin called Campo das Vertentes. And what's, um, and of course, Sun Coffee also uh, is an exporter. We export our own coffees coming from these member farms and some, some other side projects that uh, we support in, in the region. What I really feel like is special about Sun Coffee is that has, um, it had um, um, a, a vision for a specialty very early in Brazil, um, in the beginning of 2000s, when this was not very common in Brazil. And this group of farms um, really um, engaged in, in this idea that it was possible to produce uh, better coffees and, and change the perception that um, the world had about Brazilian coffees at the moment. Um, and this really sort of coincides with the, the specialty coffee movement uh, getting momentum. So this co-op has been always the, the major driving force for quality in, in this uh, region. And nowadays, um, it's been 20 years. I haven't been with the company for, uh, for that long, but um, since it started. And uh, we see it so differently. And also, perhaps more recently, uh, we have been ever more involved in how we can bring more purpose to, to the operation and um, all the stakeholders that are involved, including the community, how we can bring more positive impact. So really, in a nutshell, that's uh, what I would uh, say about uh, Sun Coffee. Perfect. Thank you so much, Alan. And then we have Alan from Belfast Coffee Roasters uh, from Northern Ireland. Would you like to introduce yourself, Alan? Sure. Um, good afternoon from a very windy and rainy Belfast in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, thanks uh, to Algrano for the, the invite. It's um, great to be on, on, uh, on the involved in the webinar. Um, we're a, a small batch coffee roaster uh, based in the heart of the city of Belfast. Uh, we've been going about two and a half years. I've been in the coffee industry for about 10 now. Um, and uh, we uh, have developed over the two and a half years in terms of what we're offering. We are um, trying to be more ethical in our approach to pretty much everything we do uh, and a bit more transparent uh, as well um, uh, whilst retaining uh, great coffee uh, and 
thanks to the relationship that we've built with Al Grano, we've, we've got some, some pretty super coffees uh, from yourselves. Um, and uh, right now, um, our biggest selling single origin is from uh, my friend Alan in uh, San Coffee in Brazil. <laughs> hey. Amazing. Awesome. How great is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Great. And then uh, finally, we have Nick, uh, who's part of the Algrano team, and he's uh, dialing in from Denmark. So Nick, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, uh, yeah, we're also calling from windy, rainy Denmark. Uh, seems to be the running theme at the moment <laughs> in Europe, right? Um, but I, so I'm, I'm originally from New Zealand, um, if you can't tell. Um, but I've been working in the coffee industry for yeah, almost as long as Ellen, um, eight years now, uh, mostly on the roasting side of um, of the, the supply chain as well. So I've recently started with El Grano to take over as sourcing manager. Um, so I'm kind of delving further into the other side of the supply chain and really starting to connect the dots. Um, I mean, I think without technology uh, and without El Grano's platform that we're using, like my job would be completely different, um, especially with Corona at the moment, where it just ha has it's been so useful just to be able to get in touch with producers and roasters um, really, really easily. So I guess we'll delve into that further uh, as we go along. But uh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so Nick already briefly uh, mentioned how coronavirus has has impacted uh, the the business um, but could we start with um, with Alan from Belfast coffee roasters um, how do you see your business has has basically evolved or changed um, during this time of, of uh, coronavirus well if you go if you go back kind of 12 months for us we would have been uh, just a, a commercial coffee roaster supplying the hospitality trade uh, and then from sort of March, uh, February, March this year, our business pivoted. Uh, and we became more of an, uh, an online um, coffee retailer and just uh, the end user ordering bags of coffee, be it beans or, or pre-ground. Um, so we went from kind of delivering bulk uh, coffee, uh, you know, in, in terms of yeah, 6, 12, 18 kilogram orders to ordering, to delivering 250 gram bags uh, of coffee. Um, again, you know, without the internet, without technology, that couldn't have, have happened um, for us. Um, what one of the key positives for us in, in terms of, of that is, is that we get to meet the end user quite a lot. In that a lot of people we've been delivering to um, may not have actually seen anyone during uh, the pandemic. And, and we turn up at their front door and we deliver coffee to them and they can chat to someone and they can ask about the coffee. And also via technology, they can get in touch with us and saying, this is, this is flavors that we like. What would you recommend? Uh, so there is that. The, the downside, obviously, is within the hospitality industry is has been hit really, really hard, uh, and it's so difficult for them. And I feel for them, and they've been working really hard when they reopen to try and uh, get everything safe for people to go uh, and enjoy the cup of coffee and go out and have a cup of coffee. Um, and now that's we've just we we're, we're in our here in Northern Ireland in our second week of uh, hospitality closure apart from takeaway. Um, right. So we had some clients that reopened and then had to close again because the takeaway thing wasn't really working for them. They're right. primarily right. set up for a sit-in operation, so it's 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 been difficult, very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you mentioned that you've opened an online shop during the springtime. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. If, maybe we have some roasters uh, that have joined the call. Um, do you have some advice in terms of how has it been opening an online shop? What do you, what do you feel are the kind of key takeaways for you in terms of um, running that that online shop? 
you have to kind of be on top of it all the time. Uh, and with in the commercial side of it, it was easy. It was it was like on on a certain day of the week, you know, your clients would be ordering for delivery on another day of the week. With the online stuff, it comes in twenty four seven. You just you know, um, I'm in here today, and and you know we've had orders coming in, so we'll have to do those today to get those ready for for shipping. We may deliver those later on today. Um, uh, so it, it's that you, you kind of have to, to to be on top of it. You have to be open uh, and, and honest and um, look after your clients. Because um, at the end of the day, they, uh, for us, they've, a lot of those have, have really helped us uh, immensely during this time in that they've gone on social media platforms and saying, hey, we're getting great coffee from Belfast Coffee Roasters. You know, you should try it. Um, so that's that's really helped. That's really nice, yeah. So really like recommendations as well from from people that are yeah, yeah. enjoying your coffee. Yeah, 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 super nice. Yeah. Um, and Alan, um, how do you see uh, the impacts of of coronavirus um, from then again from the origin perspective? Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. You, you know, at first. Um, we had really bad timing. I mean, of course, it was bad timing for everybody. Nobody wants a pandemic, but um, it, it reached Brazil and it started to spike around March. We were getting into preparations for the harvest. And that's the moment that uh, we have the most activity at the farm. And uh, from a coffee grower point of view, uh, what's also um, <clears throat> very difficult is that our harvest period is the maturation of the cherries is really decided by nature. So we, we, we couldn't postpone anything. We would have to find a solution. So very scary in the beginning um, because we, uh, at a certain moment, we didn't really know if we, if we would be able to harvest the coffee and carry out operations. And, and of course that had an impact in the beginning. But now looking backwards, it turned out to be not as bad as we thought. And I have to say that uh, comparing to um, other sectors in the economy, we feel like we have been spared um, because we are in the countryside. And then um, it seemed like the situation uh, didn't get out of control in these areas in Brazil, um, even though in other parts of the country in, in big cities, it was a, a major um, as well and now what we are seeing is that um, Brazil had a, a, a big harvest this year also so we are seeing that the flows of coffee export business flows logistics none of this has really been disrupted or stopped completely so I have to say that um, overall not as bad as we thought in the beginning okay that's that's good. Um, and Alan, have you, have you been focusing on existing relationships or have you also been building new relationships at this time? That's a very good question, Susanna. Perhaps that's where the, the, the pandemic hit us the most because again, since we are really focused on specialty, uh, there is a developing market for this in Brazil, but uh, our activity is completely uh, towards international markets not nowadays and not being able to, we didn't have a single uh, visit origin this year. It was probably the first time ever that this happened uh, from, from clients, from, from roasters, uh, people that come every year sometimes to select their coffees and our, you know, promotion internationally and the way we, we try to connect with uh, potential customers is, has always been really dependent on traveling as well. So when we realized that this wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to do this and also all the coffee events were being canceled and the regular places we would go to and, and tools that we have available to carry out this kind of uh, work uh, wouldn't be no longer, no longer available um, we decided to really focus on first of all existing relationships and then that's where um, I feel like Al Greno has been uh, really um, 
helpful in that sense because that allowed us to still, you know, try to get new connections uh, through the platform. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and Alan and Alan. Um, so if I've understood correctly, you've never met face to face. No, 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 no not at all. No. So um, it's purely a, um, a relationship built through technology. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think going back and what I'm saying about the Algrana platform, as I mentioned earlier, there was a couple of couple of words in that, that sprung to mind for us. Um, one of them was was trust. Um, in that we started dealing about two years ago um, with Algrano, and we purchased uh, a coffee from Honduras. Uh, which which we loved when after cupping it and, and talking to Tom, our account manager, uh, when he could come and see us at that point, and um, and then we kind of moved on. And then earlier on uh, this year, we replaced what was our key uh, Brazilian coffee with uh, with San coffee. Uh, and we found um, during lockdown that we thought we'd, we'd ordered enough based on what we were doing with our previous speciality, Brazilian. Uh, we thought we'd ordered enough to cover us for a year. Uh, and we, we found that it was, it was outselling our previous speciality, uh, Brazilian, which I was obviously very pleasing for us in terms of sales volume um, and also the fact that we we what we what we chose to go with um and and um with the help of, of of tom again we managed to secure some some more uh sand coffee so we've got another batch coming in uh, of, of sand coffee as as well um and you know we've done we've done that remotely we've done that via the, the algrano platform um and we we trust um algrano to with their recommendations our account manager understands our business and our the strategy for our business and where our business is moving um, and uh, without those recommendations uh, and the trust that we've built you know it, it, it becomes very difficult as a, as a, as a roaster to, to kind of change your coffees uh, without that so um, uh, thank you, Algrano, for, for pointing us in the direction of, of uh, my friend Alan here in Brazil. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah. if I have understood correctly, now it's the second year that you're sourcing from Sun Coffee. Sorry? Is it the second year now that you're sourcing? We, from... Well, we've ordered uh, for Alan's uh, next harvest. We've ordered a, a, another batch. So this we were on our first year of, uh, of Sun Coffee. So we got our first... Uh, order in in February of, of this year yeah uh, perfect. Uh, so perfect and it's the caramel, caramel it's a caramello yes yeah 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 it's really interesting because it's not what what was interesting for us is there's a kind of generalization of Brazilian coffee out there people think uh, that, that all Brazilian coffee tastes this way and then we tasted the, the, the sand coffee caramello and it's it, it kind of it kind of blew us away in the, in that it, it is different to so many other brazilian coffees uh, and it's just a fantastic it's a fantastic coffee to to to, to roast um and uh it it, it, it tastes brilliant we, we love it our clients love it um so you know we, we we couldn't be happier with it perfect yeah. Um, I, I was going to add, I feel like that's yeah. a really a, a perfect example of, um, of how the, the platform has allowed us to, same way Alan has, um, uh, was explaining that you know, this um, enabled him to, to force a copy that would be a good match for what he, he needed. Also for us, it, it's an extremely difficult job when, when you are a producer to find people out there that are really willing to work on a long-term basis and that would be willing to give you more attention and perhaps, you know, value the work that you were doing as translating to higher quality on the cup. So again, I feel like this is a great example of um, how the Algrano platform um, can 
really um, make these connections happen. Yeah. Sure. Um, so both of you have mentioned recommendations and, and trust. So I want to dive a bit deeper into that in terms of in a, in a, a situation like this where worldwide we're unable to travel um, and un unable to meet face to face. How, how do you build trust with people that, that you've never met? Um, do you have some, some insights on that? Um, yeah, I, I think, I think we, we, we built, uh, a as I said, we built a level of trust with um, Tom, our account manager, and his understanding of, of, of our business and what we're trying to develop within our business. And we would speak to him about, you know, we're looking at, at what we're looking to do in the future and what would he recommend? Um, and, you know, be it a, a coffee that we want to maybe stock year round, like Sand Coffee, which we, 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 have, we stock all year round, or be it a, dis, a, a smaller discovery, um, we can plan as well so we can speak to him in fact I, i've been speaking to tom this week about something we're looking to do in march of next year and we've been trying to plan for that and that's you know the first people we contacted was were, were al grano saying look we, we, this is what we're going to do um what would you recommend um and that's that's built up over time in terms of the contact we, we have with the account manager the coffees that, that they send our way in terms of cup for cupping um, and also the, 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 the service that we get it's as a, as a roaster, it's, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward platform in terms of going on, in terms of ordering and tracking, uh, and seeing where your, your, your coffee is and finding out some information. You know, we regularly go on and look at the growers and, and, and look at the story. And, and as Alan touched on earlier, the, the story of, of the development of, of, of sand coffee really uh, kind of struck a note with us. Uh, and, and, and on, but on top of all of that, the coffee's good. You know, the, 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 the kind of the key thing for us is that we're actually putting out a great product. Um, we're not just buying coffee, green coffee and, and, and turning it brown and sending it out. We, we actually care about the coffee. You know, we're going to drink the coffee as well. So, you know, we want it to be good. Uh, and that's, that's one of the key things for us is, is, is that the coffees are good. Um, and what, what, we, what we get and, and what we cup from our grano tends to be great quality. And in your latest uh, blog post, you mentioned a term carefully sourced. Yeah. Yeah, Can yeah. you explain uh, that to, to the audience a bit more? And by the yeah. way, I want to mention now that anyone who's joining uh, the webinar, feel free to ask any questions at any point. So uh, we definitely want to get some questions from you guys. Um, so yeah, drop your questions in the, in the Q&A section. Okay. Uh, well, you carefully source. I, I think there are a lot of coffee roasters now that are looking to be a bit more ethical in their in in their approach and you know we're doing things on sustainability in terms of we're trying to reduce our packaging and we 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 send out recyclable containers now of coffee as opposed to in in kilo and a half kilo bags um but we're we're we're, we're a fairly small coffee roaster um and um what we want to do is we, we want to be make sure that we are um, I'm trying to find. We, we want to be, be sure that what, we, what we're getting in suits, A, suits us and suits our client as well. Um, so that's that kind of carefully sourced thing. We're not just kind of going on uh, a, 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 a coffee supplier's website and, and saying, oh, okay, there's Brazil. Oh, yeah, there's what price is that? And, that, and, then, and then ordering that. We're, we're going on and we want, we want some more information. We want a bit of background. And we feel we can we get that uh, with the Algrana platform is that we can look at the growers, look at what they're doing, look at what their um, long-term ambitions are as well, and uh, that that whole kind of transparent trading, um, you know, it, it's really important for us in in, ter in 
as a company that the farmers are actually getting a fair price for, for the hard work and investment that they're doing. Um, you know, the, the coffee industry, there are a lot of, of um, rich coffee roasters and rich coffee shop chains out there that, that maybe are, are not um, giving back enough to the farmer. Uh, and we feel that by reducing the layers of bureaucracy that perhaps are there with other coffee suppliers that we don't get uh, with our grano, that that benefits the, the, the coffee grower more uh, and, and allows uh, Alan and his team to, to do the things that he, he's spoken about doing. And that's quite key to, to us. And I think that's key for our end, our end user as well, our clients. I think it's key for them to see that, that um, the, the approach that we're, that we're, we're taking. Uh, and that's why we, we, we use the word carefully, carefully sourced uh, because it is carefully sourced. Exactly. Um, and Nick, since you're in the sourcing team of Algrano, um, how do you feel that basically um, transparent trading, um, how do you see that uh, concept and, and what do you feel that it, um, yeah, it means? Um, yeah, I think like, like what I was saying earlier in my introduction, uh, like my job really wouldn't be possible without um, all these different technology uh, mediums, like without email, without WhatsApp, without Zoom and Google Meets and just the <clears throat> El Grano platform in general. Um, it was it would make things so much harder. Like obviously, especially during Corona at the moment, like we'd have to be uh, traveling to Origin to to visit producers, which we <coughs> excuse me. Which we uh, which we can't do at the moment. So um, just having these mediums at our disposable uh, at our disposal is super important. I think on a daily basis for for what I'm doing. It's just even just like having a quick be able to uh, message Alan and be like, hey, we've got this customer um, in the North Island who's interested. Uh, it, can you can you do something like this? Can you do a different process? Um, I can just send a message and maybe it's not possible, maybe it is, but we'll know straight away. Like we don't have to go once a year to the producer and have like all the uh, questions and have like obviously have a long conversation, but um, you, um, I think those smaller conversations like throughout the year um, are much more, um, yeah, effective in kind of getting in the full picture and really developing a relationship because this is an ongoing dialogue. It's not just showing up once a year, um, having a look at a coffee farm, shaking some hands and then going home, right? Like we, we want to like have these longer relationships. And I think that's, it's great to see people actually rebuying from producers. We're not just buying one year. We're trying to encourage people to like actually develop and invest in the other person, um, in the other people's business and also be able to understand their business as well. I think that goes both ways. I think uh, producers now are kind of, I think you can see it as well. Like producers are now on Instagram, like they're much more in touch with roasters. Um, they're seeing like what's, uh, coffee roasters and coffee drinkers um, are after us, which is super cool. I think like you wouldn't have uh, all these different processes like anaerobic and like diff like extended fermentations and stuff like that without um, without that dialogue between the the roaster and the and the grower and the consumer. Like so, I think. Um, uh, it's been it's been vital to to how we're kind of doing business and how um, it's shaping the industry in, in general. I think. Yeah, exactly. And Alan, um, so Nick was mentioning that you know he can send you a WhatsApp message and and get a response within an hour, which is amazing. Um, how do you see? basically building relationships with roasters in your opinion what's a sustainable relationship and and what are the best ways to communicate um and kind of what are the touch points that that you see as as valuable especially in a time like this um i, I would say that for a sustainable uh relationship uh what is um really important is to to look into 
the long term and being able to be consistent and like you mentioned earlier in terms of trust know each other because that that, that sounds very simple but it, it takes an effort that's how we can um, perhaps with alan also in uh, belfast coffee roasters the more i understand about them the more effective i can be in terms of coffees that would be uh, suitable for his needs and, and the, the other way around. The more he knows about what I am doing, the easier it is for him to uh, require a certain type of coffee that we could you know, develop together, for instance. So I feel like um, this uh, possibility of um, perhaps technology has allowed us to be more in contact. Um, that has been a small revolution in terms of uh, specialty coffee because you know, that we don't have those those barriers anymore. It's just so easy to, to have that communication flow, like Nick mentioned also. Um, and, and just getting back to, um, to your um, last question about uh, uh, trust, I feel like the other main component is transparency, which is, you know, if you, both parts need to know more about each other and, and for that you need to be transparent about uh, what's going on and that's something that's very present at the Algrano platform as well that includes pricing and what you were doing um, and again I just feel like this is a, a key um, element also for building trust. Mm -hmm. Okay great, thank you. Um, Related to that, so Alan, actually in your uh, blog post, uh, you were saying that using the platform, uh, roasters and growers have access to the price breakdown um, mm. of the beans in your cup. Could you explain yeah. that a bit more? What do you mean by that? Just, just the, uh, if I was buying coffee from a... Uh, a, co a, a green coffee wholesaler now I would go there and I would buy and I would know what the what my price is what I'm paying I don't know of that how much the farmer's getting um, I don't know of that how much the warehousing is costing how much the transportation is costing uh, and yeah, there could be between myself and the grower maybe four or five different layers of bureaucracy um, whereas now we know right now that we have um, we have Alan down in Brazil we have Al, Al Grano and then we have myself uh, ourselves the, 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 the end roaster um, uh, and that's cut, cutting out those layers and be able to see the, 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 the costs involved in that chain of events um, I think for us it is is key um, in that you know yes we, yes we're 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 a business and uh, we want to make profit at this but not at the expense of uh, the coffee grower because without them where where are we where are we and we want them to develop their business. So that they, you know, they, they get more consistency in, in terms of what they're producing. They're able to affect changes within their their farms uh, and their area, um, and to develop because the way the market is developing, um, and 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 we can we can see all of this um, now uh, in, in in our trading with uh, with our grano. Yes, perfect. Exactly. Um, and Nick, right now um, with this current situation, um, what do you feel like from your perspective? Do you think that the role of technology uh, will continue to play a big part in, in coffee relationships? Or do you think that um, visiting a region is, is anyways a, a key, key part of that? How do you see this? And, I also want to hear uh, the perspectives of Alan and Alan, but let's start with Nick. Um, good question. Um, I think like it really depends on when Corona is 
uh, under control and the situation changes like right now it is essential because that's the only option for people sourcing coffee basically um but i think in the future like uh, assuming everything kind of goes back to normal or whatever um but i think you'll still see people traveling to origin but like i think the this realization that we can use different media and different technologies to be in communication with producers um, and connect them with roasters, I think is going to just add layers uh, to the relationships that we already have, um, which I think is super, super important. Uh, it's just about, yeah, like those quick communications and even just like sharing market information, I think is um, super valuable for i mean it goes both ways but valuable for producers and valuable for for us as a, a sourcing team as well um like for us to be able to know what's happening in brazil um that week you know is just it's huge like if we're not reading the newspaper in brazil every day um so sometimes we just need to like know what is like the kind of um what's happening in Brazil, uh, what's even the weather like, like what's, um, when is harvest going to happen? Like the fact that we can get those um, in in real time is, is super essential. Um, but I think like, but at the end of the day, like nothing really beats a, a visit and, you know, being able to have lunch with the other guy as well. And I mean, as much as we, we like to think uh, technology can bridge a lot of those gaps, it's it's still not like quite there. Maybe one day uh, with virtual reality, you never know, we can start sourcing coffee that way. Um, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't solve like tasting the coffee side by side with the, the guys that grew it. Um, yes, but I mean, I think it's definitely gonna change a lot for the future. Um, I think it's going to open a lot of opportunities for particularly smaller businesses that are just starting up um, to actually have communication with the producers. Like they don't have a the time and the the resources necessarily to be traveling to producing countries all the time and set up all these um, connections. And I mean, it's quite a complicated uh, supply chain. So they also need to be able to, to do that. So I think um, even just being able to have conversations like this um, is going to definitely be staying around I think uh, for the, for the long term, um, I'm sure we'll still be traveling, but I think the the relationships themselves will become a lot richer. Uh, we'll have more kind of understanding for when we do that first visit to the to the origin. Like we will have like a a few conversations already um, and an understanding of of where, what that producer's perspective is, and the producer will have an idea of what the roaster's perspective is. So they'll already have a dialogue, which I think is uh, really important. Perfect. And Alan, um, how do you see the future of relationships once Corona is over? Uh, do you think that technology will continue to play an important role, or how do you see this? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more with Nick on, on that one. I, I feel like we need to see technology as an ally and it, especially the, the pandemic has uh, really showed us how important it is. And I feel like it can even play a bigger role um, in, in the supply chain in the future, but there is no substitute for uh, the experience you have yourself um, we are still expecting you guys to visit us at some point here in Brazil because, you know, this is the, um, again, I feel like the, it's very hard to replicate the, the experience that you would have and regardless of um, how much technology can speed up things and we, sh we should be using it wisely. Um, some level of personal relation and, and, and being and, and feeling the environment. Uh, is, uh, I, I believe, is also really important. Perfect. And Alan, um, would you agree that technology um, will continue to play a role or, or how do you see, see it? Yeah, I think uh, Nick kind of touched on a really key point there for a lot of, you know, we were a startup business two and a half years ago and we didn't have the time or the resources to go and visit 
uh, farms um, as much as we may want to. We, we didn't have that. And then, you know, we, we started a relationship with Algrano and, um, you know, we, we're, we're able to get, you know, a pretty good insight into different coffee farms and how they're working and how they're operating. Uh, and yes, I, I agree with Alan that there's, there's, I have a background in the, in, in the wine trade and there's nothing quite like visiting uh, some, uh, like a vineyard and understanding the environment and, and the culture and the, the, the landscape uh, and on all of those things, you don't, you, you can't get that with the best will in the world. You can't get that via technology. You really do have to um, go and visit. But what this allows us to do is that we can, we can build a relationship with uh, some key growers. Uh, and then we can say, right, okay, we, we, we want to go and visit those guys. We want to understand more because we see them as being an integral part of, of, of our business um you know uh, and 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 two years ago our grano were were not an integral part of our business but now they are a key component in in our business and the growth of our business and uh, and certainly uh, this year san coffee has been you know a, a key coffee for us going forward um so therefore you know that that kind of leads us into, into kind of right right this if we're going to go and visit one, we're going to go and visit that one. Um, so, you know, uh, expect to see us anytime soon, Alan. Um, <laughs> we'd like some, well, non, some non-windy and, and non-rainy weather, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are very welcome, as long as you bring some rain with you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'll start putting my buckets out this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I could also add, uh, Susanna, to that is that, um, you know, the fact that you were able to know things better with technology, whether you were in contact um, via social media or, you know, that also helps because it's, it's difficult to, to move directly to, we know like traveling abroad is an effort financially in terms of time. So perhaps being able to build up that connection uh, early on um, helps you to, you know, feel more um, comfortable about uh, the time and when you really decide to make the move and, and visit. I feel like uh, technology is essential in that way also. Yeah, thank you for, for adding that. That's a, that's a really good point. We actually have a few questions from the audience. So this first one is for Alan. Um, what is your advice for startup roasters as to how and where to best source the green coffee, considering well, the small volumes? Uh, I, I would say is, is contact as many suppliers as you can, cup as many coffees as you can, tell them what you're going to be using it for. Um, our experience is that most uh, coffee supplies are, are helpful in that way in terms of cupping. If you're going to cup roasted samples or green samples, you know, explain to them what, what you're aiming for um, and just taste as much coffee as you possibly can. Um, it's one of the joys of being in the industry is, is, is drinking a lot of coffee. Um, so yeah, do, do that. Um, that would be my, my, my main suggestion. Perfect. Um, and then we also have a question. So this is now for Alan. Um, what do you think about capsule format on high quality blends? Uh, so for example, uh, coffee from Sun Coffee, uh, would you say that it's compatible also for capsules? You put me on the spot. <laughs> no, um, you haven't answered I, the question yet <laughs> yeah yeah no i i really feel like we need to be in terms of specialty quality we need to be inclusive so i wouldn't rule out uh, capsules i mean the, the as long as you're willing to work with coffees that are like um, um alan said carefully sourced and you have good raw material 
the main thing about capsules is perhaps the fact that um, it's pre-ground and then you're not going to have the same level of freshness. Um, again, I, I feel like this is a possible solution for many consumers out there and I would be all for um, you know, people that want to develop higher quality capsules. Um, same holds true for people ask me all the time about Robusta and Arabica. What do I think about high quality or specialty Robusta? I feel, it's very, I feel like it's very legitimate. As an industry, we, we all have to grow and, and find solutions. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, now I wanna ask um, something funny. <laughs> so we've been talking about like communicating uh, direct through technology. So, um, Alan, what's been like the funniest message you've received uh, from a roaster or a partner uh, through Instagram or through any other communication? Can you remember some fun, fun message that you've received? Mm, I, I don't think there were any like uh, funny ones, perhaps like people being confused about things and um but i i can't remember something that comes to my mind right now that i would say was uh funny in a sense no most of the time it's very objective okay <laughs> or business right <laughs> or business oriented yes but perhaps uh other alan has uh, something to add um in, in terms of Funny request, we, uh, we, get, uh, we, we do get a lot of kind of gift stuff now. So we get people who are sending messages and, uh, and stuff like that. Sometimes they can be slightly awkward. Um, but, you know, you know um, I think a lot of people are choosing to send people coffee um, now. Oh, I'm, I'm changing my link here. Look at that. Um, is that better? Um, where am I? I'm, I'm lost. Look at this one. <laughs> We're back. Oh, look at that. Uh, um, so yeah, so we get so we get some strange we get some strange requests. There's a lot of people sending coffee to various people. Um, I've got a, oh, I might have to, I've got my phone and my laptop going at the same time. Uh, there's a bit this of an echo. Echoing, uh, switch that. Let me let me switch this one off. Let's go. Yeah. How about for you guys at Algreno? Any yeah. anything that comes I, to your mind? I shared a funny one recently when um, I was getting in touch with some guys from Rwanda. We we're just about to close this container um, and this was actually this wasn't a message but this was over um it was like a skype call facetime or something and kathak says to me um producer ronda what is on your face man <laughs> referring to <laughs> a mustache <laughs> I, I haven't seen him since uh, since i grew it as well so it's just like first thing is just like what is on your face man <laughs> But it's a relevant question, I mean. <laughs> it's an important question, uh, exactly. <laughs> no doubt. So, um, Alan, there's a question for you uh, from the audience. Uh -huh. And it is, how do you communicate about suggested roasts uh, for different coffees? And, and how do you give uh, suggestions on, on yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, let's see if um, Alan is also back because I think he would be in, in terms of roasting, he would have more of a more of an expertise than myself. But what I can say in terms of um, sample roasting and and how we translate that and we we communicate with roasters, uh, we try to be very consistent. And and nowadays there is tools available for you to actually replicate very closely the same roasting curve that we are doing at our lab with our roasters and that really helps for us to evaluate together again each separate cupping and each roast will be always slightly different i like to say it's like a photograph if you take it one second afterwards it might be something different but that helps to create a common language and things that we can discuss 
and, and make sure that we are evaluating uh, using the same methods and protocols. That's also true for cupping. Mm -hmm. Not sure if that really answers the question, but perhaps, um, perhaps in the audience they were. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say perhaps in the audience they, they wanted to know more um, on the roaster side from, from Alan, uh, how does he define his uh, roasting profile for the coffee? I see, yeah, I, um, while we're waiting for Alan to come back, I, I had something to add about the, um, about what Alan was saying with the, um, being able to share cupping roast profiles. I think the possibilities now with that, I mean, I'm not like working for Aikawa, but I've like that roaster just, I think it's a total game changer for the industry as a whole. The fact that we can be roasting a, coffee like a coffee sample and then send the exact same profile to um you guys in brazil and be like uh, and have just know that it's the same roast profile i think is insane like there's been so many issues up until now with you know roasting on like a, a drum roaster with you know you have problems with gas in different places and all that sort of stuff so the fact that you can have that uh, consistency and that rep replicability um and the ability to send the profile to someone across the world is just like insane. And then the fact that you can take that roaster with you to the origin country and taste it uh, with the producer, I think is just, uh, I think it's super cool. Um, I think that's really like opened the possibilities for just, just having like a, just knowing that what we're tasting in Europe is the same as what we're tasting in Brazil is just insane. Yeah, I agree. It is. It is insane. Yeah. And Alan, um, great that we have you back. Um, do you have, <laughs> do you have something to add um, regarding roast profiles? Um, how do you determine the, the best roast profile for a coffee and, and also regarding uh, communicating about the roast profile with, with the, with the producer, for example, um, how do you see this? Yeah, again, Colin, Nick touched on that in terms of profiling, uh, and we would we would profile coffee. We would get a profile in. We would cut to a certain to a certain level in in terms of we would ask the, you know, we would ask that we're going to be using it for filter. We're going to be using it for uh, espresso. Um, uh, and Alan's coffee actually works across both uh, really really well. Uh, which is great. Uh, in the, it, it, it can it can cover a lot a, a lot of bases. It can be used as espresso and can also be used as, uh, as filter. Uh, and then from that, we would also then we would profile it uh, ourselves. So we would we would draw it out at, at different stages of development and then and then cup it and just we're we're either kind of just um, agreeing with what was was sent to us or we're saying like hey, we we feel we can. It needs to be adapted slightly, slightly lighter, slightly darker, with whichever to, to suit uh, our client base uh, uh, as well. But you know, the, the, the client base, I'm sure, Nick's, Nick's, Nick's the same as that. Our clients now are, are, are developing in terms of the style of style of coffee, uh, and, and certainly here in Northern Ireland, um, since I've lived here, um, the coffee industry has moved incredibly. Uh, it, during that time, uh, uh, and it's moved away from being dark roasted coffee um, to being, you know, there's all there's the, 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 the Scandinavian style of, of coffee roasting is is, is is quite prevalent over here as well. Um, uh, but still, there's still a, a huge market for espresso style and espresso based drinks. Um, so you know that we, we would we would we can adapt the, the, the profiles to suit, and we would speak to you know, Al Grano and say we're going to be using it for this. And what would you recommend for, for that? And you know, they can again that that word trust comes up in terms of they would point us in, in, the, in the right direction, and their recommendations are you know uh, help us a lot. As you can see, a flavour wheel behind me. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> So yeah, so and, and also obviously that that then goes to to, to being in contact with uh, the likes of the, the grower themselves as well in, 
in, in terms of what would they recommend for certain coffees? Do they recommend it to be a, a filter style? Do they recommend it to be an espresso? Or do they recommend it to be a general coffee that, that, that you can roast light and, and get certain flavors and you can roast dark and get, and get other flavors coming through as well? Um, and, I, and that's one of the things that, one of the reasons why we picked the, the, the Caramello is that we can, we can roast it uh, slightly darker for espresso style and then roast it lighter for the, the, our filter customers as well. Yeah. A bit long-winded, but does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, so we've covered the questions from the audience. Now's the final chance for the audience to ask any questions to our lovely panelists. Um, we're almost out of time, um, but I would like to ask Alan, um, so we've discussed now the caramel blend. Um, would you like to also um, mention a few of the um, yeah, other coffees that you have and also where do you deliver, which countries and uh, where are your existing um, customers um, in which parts of the world? Yeah, so about this uh, Caramello uh, recipe, um, it's uh, what we aim is actually something to be very versatile and um, consistent over time. So um, we actually combine only pulpit natural coffees coming from member farms. So we create very homogeneous lots, but that tend to be very, that can be large also and consistent over time. Uh, we select those profiles by cupping and again we keep the same process, pulp and natural, which helps us to have this uh, consistency over time. Uh, in terms of coffees, you can see also a selection of uh, different farms from Sun Coffee, always uh, available at Al Grano platform. Um, the ones that come to my mind at the moment, but this is also very dynamic are Santa Clara, Cruzeiro, um, and Villa Boa. These are uh, available at, at the moment. Um, and in terms of where we, we operate, um, nowadays most of our business is in, in Asia. So our biggest market is uh, Japan, Korea, and Australia, also very important. Um, in Europe, the main um, market for us nowadays would be Germany. And of, of course, we, have, we do have some business in North America, US, and, and Canada. Um, but places where it has been growing and developing nowadays are perhaps more Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Okay, so basically, um, you're, you're shipping Sun Coffee all around the world. Yeah, indeed, indeed. As long as there is a, a, someone that is willing to, to get a very good cup of coffee anywhere in the world, we'll go there. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, I think now we've covered all the questions. There's uh, no more new questions from the panelists. They're very pleased with what they've heard from you for, uh, for the questions that they've had. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to, to add still? Um, Anything regarding the situation worldwide or anything regarding um, the current current crop from Brazil or? Um, I think one thing I'd add is um, just positivity, I think is gonna be super essential in, um, in everything that we're doing like as an industry, we just really need to find ways to um, you know, work together and we don't have the same possibilities as we had before. So we need to like really rely on, on the tools that we have and the relationships that we do have and just keep them, um, stay positive about it and just keep developing uh, as an industry. Like we come too far, I think, to go, um, to let it go back to where it was or, you know, like I think, if we can just keep pushing um, and keep talking to each other and keep listening to each other, then um, I think we're going to be able to achieve the, the goals that we have as an industry. Perfect. Alan, Alan, yeah. 
Uh, um, just to to finish on a on a positive note, I mean, uh, of course, we we know uh, we get the news about situation with the coronavirus uh, getting a bit worse in Europe. We don't know what lies ahead for us. We we tend to be behind the curve, but our first wave has already been uh, massive, also. But as uh, Nick said, the only way is really forward, and you know, we we regardless of what happens, we are still cultivating our love and, and passion for, for coffee. So again, I, I see a bright, fr bright future if we, if we keep um, in that direction. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. And, and one of the things that, that kind of Nick touched on there was, was about uh, relationships. Uh, and that's key to, for, for any businesses to, to grow in terms of, we obviously want to grow, our grana want to grow, uh, Alan wants to sell more of his, his fantastic Brazilian coffee. And, and, and you know, that, that the only way we can do that is by keep going, going with these kind of relationships and keep doing this kind of thing as well right now, because this kind of thing is, is the key way for all of us to stay uh, in touch um, and, and to understand what's happening um, within, you know, we're all in different parts of the world and, um, you know, to understand what's happening in, in, in that part of the world uh, during what is a, a really difficult time for, for, for everybody. And, and I, I feel that what we do in, in terms of to, for, for our customer right now is that, is that they're getting a lot of enjoyment out of those, that, those people that are at home are really kind of want to treat themselves to something which is really fantastic. And, and, and we're, 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 as a company, we're, we're scoring points there because we, 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 we think we're providing uh, really good coffee for, for those people and that's helping some of them get through and we get you know, lots of positive feedback onto that and so in, it, it really helps them. They, they know they're going to, you know, at some point in the day, I'm going to have a really fantastic cup of uh, sand coffee um, to help me get through the day and that's, that's great. Um, and that's, that's what we've got to keep, keep doing and keep, and, and as Nick said, keep being positive about the, the industry that we're in because it really is developing at a rapid rate um, uh, uh, and there's some, some really great things happening within the industry. Yeah, definitely. And we're all in this together. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Great. Thank you so much um, to you amazing panelists and our lovely audience as well. Um, if there's any questions that our audience has uh, later on, um, please feel free to contact us um, at Al Grano and then we're happy to connect you also with, uh, with Alan from Sun Coffee and Alan from uh, Belfast Coffee Roasters. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you guys. It feels like we've been in the same, same room together <laughs> talking about uh, the current situation and, and where, where the coffee industry is going. So thank you so much for your time and um, yeah. Thank you. Hugs. Thank you. <laughs> Hugs. <laughs> Hugs. Virtual, Virtual hug. Virtual hug to everyone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's been great. Thank you. Uh, it's been really good. All right. So enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. And drink great. some good coffee. <laughs> yes. Cheers now. Ciao, ciao. Bye.